<clears throat> Madden Holiday is here and we will play all night. Call in sick and sound sincere in tackles will delight. The fridge is packed with drink and meat. The taste of victory sure is sweet. Okay, here we are, week two, another preview show, another three games to cover, and no, they're not all primetime games this week, even though I know there is a second Monday night game this week between the Bills and Titans. However, I really don't want to cover Buffalo two weeks in a row. In fact, I really don't want to cover a team two weeks in a row unless it's absolutely necessary, and, well, we're just too early in the season to cover something like that. Still, I had a pretty good week prediction-wise, if you think about it. I mean, I had the Bills pulling away for a victory in the second half, which they did. I had Tampa Bay winning handily, which they did. And, I mean, I wasn't the only one who thought Russell Wilson was going to just dominate the Seahawks. I didn't expect Geno Smith to have a career renaissance. And let's face it, no one expected Geno Smith to suddenly have a career renaissance outside of Geno Smith. So, I mean, I guess that's a wash. But still, as Meatloaf said, two out of three ain't bad. Also, sorry if you're hearing some background noise here. There's some distortion from the computer that's getting picked up by the microphone. I'm trying to minimize it as best I can, but you might still hear some of it, especially during the pausing segments. Anyway, the three games we're covering this week are the Los Angeles Chargers at the Kansas City Chiefs, which is the Thursday game, a Sunday afternoon game between the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the second Monday night game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. So let's get to it. It's made tough. It has to be. Hey, kid! Hey, you got my lucky jersey. Yeah? Can I have it back? You gotta be kidding. Uh, you little No! You want athletic wear that can survive anything? Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. All right, guys, listen up. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to kick it. We're going to fake it and give the ball to Troy on a reverse to the left side. If there's one team that'll fall for this, it's the Jets. Can't wait to see the look on their faces. Jets are in for a big support. Uh-oh. Going into the wrong huddle. Another unfortunate side effect of hunger. So dead. Grab a Snickers, packed with peanuts, caramel, and chocolate. I love New York. Let's do lunch sometime. Hungry? Grab a Snickers. Okay, our first game is, of course, the Los Angeles Chargers visiting the Kansas City Chiefs, the Thursday night game, and if it's anything like last year's, this is probably going to wind up being another barn burner, especially since both teams look pretty strong in Week 1. The revamped Chargers defense looked very strong against the Raiders, keeping them in check and causing several turnovers, and of course, it looks like Patrick Mahomes really hasn't skipped a beat since losing Tyree Kill in a total domination of the Arizona Cardinals. Granted, I don't think the Cardinals are very good this year, but still, they did play rather well. Now, I do remain fully confident in the abilities of Justin Herbert to lead the Chargers offense and well the Kansas City defense has always been kind of suspect they've only been mildly decent at best in fact I believe the Chargers may have won like two of the last three games played in Kansas City so it's not even possible that there could be a home field advantage there Still, overall, with Mahomes cooking the way it is, I think that eventually the Chiefs are going to just outpace the Chargers. And the fact of the matter is, I do kind of give them a home field advantage still. I mean, that arrowhead is going to be jumping and packed, so everything should be fully nice for the Chiefs to easily win this. Though it still could wind up going to overtime. I do expect something of a shootout here. Hey, you think you got a game? Mine's a hard hit, tear them up, turf eating, tight rope walking, stick them, stick them. Let's go at it, scud launching, end zone dancing, trench loving, matchup making, don't call me slow. Over the top, turkey leg eating, high flying, steam rolling, hole closing, go to guy dressed in mud kind of game. You want some of that? Bring your best game. Madden NFL 96, the ultimate judge on any of these home arenas. If it's in the game, EA Sports, it's in the game. When I was a boy, I dreamed of playing football! But I was allergic to milk, and the soybean juice substitute that my mother gave me made my bones weak. But I, I digress. My point is, I love football! Football! 
The ballet of bulldozers, the moments of grace in a sea of fury, the crowd fickle, fanatical, and faithful. Every kickoff is possibility, every down of war, and every now and then it doesn't come down to fancy strategy or speed or strength. It comes down to who has more heart. Yes! You see, football is in my bones. And where goes the two-point conversion, the onside kick, or the TV timeout? So go I! I've seen the locker rooms, my friends. I have smelled the shoes, stormed the field, and sung the songs. And I have heard the footsteps. Yes, and they say to me, Stanley, is football the greatest game in the world? And I say, yes, footsteps. Yes, it is. Moving on to our next game, as the New England Patriots appear to be in desperate need of a victory, as Steelers looked pretty well against Cincinnati last week. Still, though, I have to admit, the Steelers' defense is what really won that game, and now T.J. Watt is hurt, so I don't know how much that's really going to affect things. I mean, it did seem like they were able to carry on and play some decent defense without him, but who really knows? That being said, I think it's going to follow the Steelers' offense to really do something here. They did not play that well in Cincinnati. Yeah, they got 20 points, but you got to remember, 7 of them was on a pick 6, and, well, the rest of those were on a short field, except for the overtime field goal. So, yeah, that's not exactly inspiring a lot of confidence in me. Still, after last week's performance, the New England Patriots offense looks really iffy on its own, especially since there are now reports that Mac Jones is injured. That just appears to make an already iffy offense even iffier. So, yeah, if the Pats are going to win this game, the defense is really going to have to carry them through this. Then again, given the iffiness of the Steelers' offense, maybe they might still have a shot. That being said, I really don't see that happening. I'm going to guess that Steelers win this game very comfortably, possibly by 10 points. IBM presents You Make the Call. A Bobby A. Bear pass is intercepted by Michael Carter of the 49ers, who takes it from the five yard line into his own end zone where he is trapped by the Saints. Now, you make the call. Whose ball is it and where? Every 500 years or so, an exceptional printer comes along. Introducing the IBM laser printer with a revolutionary design that will make it the new standard for years to come. The IBM laser printer. Suddenly, nothing else measures up. In redefining the laser printer, IBM made it 33% smaller, with 60% fewer parts than the old standard. Could that be the reason it's also 25% faster? The IBM laser printer. Suddenly, nothing else measures up. What call did you make? When an interception occurs in the field of play and is carried into the end zone, the ball goes to the intercepting team at the point of the interception. They're gonna love this joint, Madden. If I don't die of thirst before we get there, I can't go on, Mick. I don't be a chump. I'm thirsty too. Just think of those ice cold Miller lights. Yeah, lights got the big taste I need for this kind of thirst. Stand aside. I'm coming through. Don't say it. I already know. For a big thirst, there's only one light beer, Miller Light. Hi, Mickey. How'd she get here? Memo. Memo. Finally, we have what has to be considered the biggest toss-up of the week given the team's performances in their previous games, and that is, of course, the Minnesota Vikings visiting the Philadelphia Eagles on the second broadcast for Monday Night Football, or to be precise, the second game of the Monday Night Football double header, I guess. Anyway, the Minnesota Vikings obviously looked very dominant against Green Bay in Week 1. Still, I'm guessing now that there's a lot of game film on him, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be pretty hip to Justin Jefferson. Added to that, the Eagles' offense did look very high-powered against the Lions, last week and the fact of the matter is I think the Eagles have a better receiving core than the Packers do right now or at least a more experienced receiving core so that could wind up giving the Vikings defense fits. What could also wind up providing complications is the fact that I believe Miles Sanders is a very similar runner to A.J. Dillon who in fact had a pretty decent game against the Vikings in week one so that could wind up presenting some problems for that team. Then again, the Lions also managed to score about 35 points on the Eagles, and not all of that was in garbage time. There were times the Lions looked very effective moving the ball down the field, and I'm guessing it's just kind of because there's a lot of really old guys on the Eagles' defense. I mean, Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham are still around, and they've kind of been there forever. 
forever. Forever. And at the end of the day, I think that's just going to be the major turning point. I think the Vikings' defense is better than the Eagles' defense right now, and it should bend but not break just enough to keep the Eagles' offense in check so that the Vikings can easily pull away and get maybe a five- to six-point victory. So, yeah, I'm going to pick the Vikings in this one. Okay, maybe that's a homer pick, but still, I just think the Vikings are a better team right now. Okay, so the next video is going to be covering episodes 4 and 5 of She-Hulk, and then the video after that will probably be covering the finale of She-Hulk, or what I guess you would call the finale of She-Hulk. So, the final three episodes of She-Hulk, unless there's a season two. Anyway, uh, then after that, it's probably going to be the random trade review on Transformers uh, Volume 1, The World in Your Eyes. So, also I have to talk a little bit about that right here. Um... You're going to hear a new theme music for the Random Trade Review. I, I just... Huh. Everybody's favorite scam artist's ad rev popped up and claimed my video, or to be more precise, a snippet of my end theme music for some reason, claiming that some guy, monster synth magnet bass, bloobity bloobity blah blah blah, I got... Uh, anyway, they, there's a copyright claim on... A snippet of my end theme music, which is weird because they haven't retroactively copied or claimed any of my other videos like they did the last time, which was in like 2016. <sighs> anyway, sorry. Um, and uh, I, I, I just don't have the time to constantly be fighting that every time I upload that an episode of the Random Trade Review. So yeah, I switched out the music. I didn't. I am disputing the copyright claim they have right now. Uh, right, they have yet to respond as of this recording, and hopefully they just let this thing expire because they really don't have a leg to stand on. I've always sourced that track. I've yeah, it's a, it's in the show description and the end credits of the video. I even went back to that website and checked. You know, even tweaked the address if needed. So it should have worked, but still, I'm I'm not happy. Um, and, you know, the new track should work as well. It's not quite the same, but it's just similar enough that uh, hopefully it won't be too jarring a difference. And I've already run through a test, so it should not get claimed here, hopefully. So, uh, ho again, hopefully things will shake out. Uh, like I said, next two videos are going to be wrapping up the finales of She-Hulk. And then we're going to be doing the random trade review on Transformers. See you all next time. Hey guys, remember that you can support my work at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions. Also, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel, and ring that notification bell so that way you can be alerted to further videos.